lesson number 38. From this lesson, I'll be talking about shogi instruments. So let me talk about shogi board today, especially from the aspect on which it's considered as an industrial art object. We can classify the kinds and the values of a shogi board by various aspects. First of all, basically there are two types of shogi boards, leg-mounted board and on-table board. From lesson number one to five, I've used leg-mounted type, but from number six, I've been using on-table type. And uh, the values of the board vary according to its thickness. We usually measure the thickness by the unit sun. Sun is Japanese inch. A sun is equal to 30.3 millimeters, a bit longer than an inch. This one is probably five or six sun board, and this one is two sun board. A leg mounted board is made from a single cut from a tree, which makes it more expensive. But on table ones are usually made by combining two or three pieces of wood into one. You can see the borders here and here, right? They do that because if they made it with one piece of wood, it would cause some unusual curvature or some cracks as we use it for ages. And by the way, we also have the regular size for this side of the board is 12 suns by 11 suns. So it's a bit longer in this direction. All right, the next thing that discriminates the values among the boards is what kind of tree is made of. The costliest wood is this, kaya. This is how it looks. It has a good durability and also an excellent elasticity. So it can stand to many, many times of hits by shogi pieces. Its density is high and makes a beautiful sound when it's hit by a piece. The color and the grains are also beautiful and that uh, it has abundant oil in it. So as you keep using it for years, the color turns to a beautiful amber with luster. Oh, and it has good incense too. And particularly expensive kaya is Hyuga kaya, which we can get here in Miyazaki Prefecture in Japan. The temperature difference between summer and winter is pretty large in here and the growing speed of the tree is rather slow because the soil is not so fertile. So it has very clear and high dense annual rings. Other kinds of wood we use for shogi board are spruce, katsura, ginkgo, Japanese cypress, hiba, and agathis, and so on. Now let's see how the boards are cut from a tree. You see, these straight grains made from the annual ring is called masa and it's thought to be the most beautiful way of cutting it. So, let's suppose this is a cross section of a tree. The most luxurious way of cutting it is this. It's four side masa. You can see masa on all four sides but this cut weighs too much other portions around it, so we don't make this these days. So the costliest one today is this. It's called top bottom masa. It's still expensive because you can use only the radius of the tree, so you need more than twice big tree than the board, which means the tree has to be hundreds of years old. This is an example of top bottom masa. You can see beautiful masa on both sides. And this one is top masa. You can see masa only on the top. The size of the tree can be a bit smaller than top bottom masa. See? But still expensive. This is an example. And we have semi masa, in which one part is not masa. So the tree can be even a bit smaller. Now the cheap ones are these. They can be made by much smaller wood because they can use the diameter of the tree. This one is called wood front, in which we use this side as the top. And this one is called wood back. A wood back is thought to be more valuable than wood front 
because usually the grains are more beautiful in the back but harder to find one without cracks or dirty spots. Wood front ones can even be made like this, right? So it's much cheaper. It can be made by a small wood. So this one is wood backboard and wood front board. You see you can't see masa on the top. All right, so after you cut the wood, it'll be seasoned for more than five years before it's processed so as to slowly and fully dry the wood. This way the wood won't make curvature or crack. And uh, this is the most skillful part by the craftsman. We call it tachimori, sword graduation. You see, he draws the lines with a Japanese sword. The edge of the sword is made blunt, of course, otherwise it would cut the wood. And they use Japanese lacquer to draw lines. You see, he puts lacquer to the sword here. Now watch this incredible skill. Okay, and also the legs are carved by craftsman's own hand. It's the shape of a gardenia fruit. Gardenia is called kuchinashi in Japanese, which means no mouth. So it's a symbol for this principle. You must not give advice to the players while they're playing. And uh, this is the bottom side. One of the four legs is detachable and usually an autograph of the craftsman who made the board is written there. And there's this hollow in the center. It's called a sound catch or a navel. It prevents the board from making unusual curvature or cracks and it is said it also makes the piece hitting sound more beautiful. And uh, sometimes we call it a blood puddle too. Because I don't know if it's true but it's because it is traditionally said if one carelessly made advice to a player in the middle of the game, he got decapitated and his head was put on here. It's so scary. Now let me show you the P stands too. There are stands for on table boards and leg mounted boards according to their height. There's one leg type and there's four leg type. They're often made from those trees same as the boards but costly ones are often made by mulberry trees and ones with beautiful patterns on them are thought to be valuable. I'll show you another one. This kind of beautiful patterns are called moku but it's not always made from the annual rings because you see you can see the grains of annual rings in this way, right? See it? So the patterns in this direction the beautiful one, is not from annual rings. I'm not sure how these patterns are generated, but I think it's some kind of natural phenomenon. Alright, that's all for this lesson. See you next time.